Hi, I'm Lynn Woodland, author of Making Miracles, Create New Realities for Your Life and Our World. Welcome to my video blog, where every month I address a different piece of the journey of self-actualization as it relates to the month we're in. And I, I like to fit the message with the season because the cycles of nature just so perfectly portray the whole dance between light and dark, life and death, yin and yang, and all together create a template for the whole of human experience, with each season lending itself to a different kind of spiritual work and personal growth. So here we are in November, that wonderful time of year when after the harvest, food is so abundant, and in many parts of the world, a whole string of holiday traditions begin a season of eating. Uh, you know, raiding the kids' trick-or-treat candy, a string of holiday parties, yearly family gatherings, all the homemade cookies that show up at the office, and so on. And for so many of us who mm, we may already be kind of overfed and, and diet conscious, this season of food can be a time of losing our tenuous hold on sensible eating habits. And, and it might be a time when we just find ourselves surrendering completely to weeks of uncontrolled feasting on rich and sentimental comfort foods. But mom only makes this once a year, we tell ourselves, or it's only for the holidays. And, and then January comes and we wonder how that extra 10 pounds got there. So if you found that a little bit of cheating on sensible eating morphs into a month long binge for you at holiday time, consider a whole different approach, an alternative to deprivation or binging that involves neither guilt nor denial, one that actually results in more eating pleasure, you know, much more so than simply eating everything in sight. The secret has to do with replacing quantity with quality, and autopilot eating habits with an extra measure of attentiveness. Conscious eating is all about waking up our taste buds to every sensory delight so that we don't miss even a second's worth of enjoyment by simply falling into unconscious eating habits. And it enables us to enjoy our food more while requiring less to feel satisfied. Binging happens when we stop paying attention. We may enjoy that first bite but then we keep eating to recapture that first moment's gratification even after the food is no longer delivering it. And we may eat for reasons other than hunger. We may eat to fill an emotional void or to stuff painful feelings. Binging also happens when we've developed such a long-term habit of restrictive dieting that just a taste of something not on our food plan sends us into a, an out-of-control eating frenzy where we just consume enough to hold us through the long drought of deprivation that invariably follows cheating. So this holiday plan involves putting down the whip of guilt and discipline and easing up on food restrictions while simultaneously paying more attention to the whole experience of appetite and craving and satisfaction. It involves eating exactly what you want, exactly when you want, and looking at all foods as being equally good. Now this isn't permission to binge, rather it's a challenge to go out of your way to feed yourself exactly what you really want even when eating what's readily available would be easier. This is about treating yourself to what will give the greatest possible eating pleasure, instead of treating yourself with whatever great quantities 
of sugar and fat happen to cross your path. Now, I admit this approach is not for everyone, and, and please don't substitute my suggestions for your doctor's counsel. But if it's appealing to you at all, consider devoting the holiday season to making every eating experience a conscious one. That means eliminating as many distractions as possible, like TV and reading materials and eating on the run, just eliminating all of those in order to savor every bite. Make eating a meditation before you put anything in your mouth. Become quiet and relaxed. Take a few deep breaths and say to yourself, everything I eat turns to health and beauty. You can even do this at the holiday table with, with friends and family, especially with family, where the temptation may be strong to stuff down childhood feelings with a second helping of pie. Disconnecting a bit inwardly and, and putting your attention on the food, on your body, on your nourishment, and on your experience of pleasure can help break the knee-jerk habit to the stuff family feelings with food. And as you take a moment to be with your food before you consume it, picture it being easily assimilated by your body and turning into health and beauty. And then eat slowly, paying close attention as you chew and swallow. And stop the minute you feel the first sensation of fullness. And if you're full but you just can't stand the thought of leaving all that yummy food on your plate, ask for a doggy bag. And after you finish eating, just sit quietly for a moment. Relax. <sighs> Take some more deep breaths. And imagine a feeling of comfortable fullness and lightness in your body. Imagine that your stomach is filled, not just with food, but with peace and a well-being that radiates soothing sensations throughout your body. And then don't eat again until you feel the first sensation of hunger then eat immediately, but again, only until you feel the first sensation of fullness. And pay attention as you eat, chew well, and really notice how food feels in your stomach. Really notice what the sensation of fullness is like, what the sensation of hunger is like. And every time you feel hunger, ask yourself, what food you most crave. Feed yourself the food or foods that are just what you want. You may find yourself craving previously forbidden foods at first, just because enforced restriction can in and of itself create cravings. Um, we, we start to crave whatever has been denied. But as you eat consciously in this way, you're likely to find yourself satisfied with much less. And as you eat consciously but not restrictively, you may also be surprised by your cravings, becoming more and more balanced. In fact, I once saw a perpetually dieting and vegetable phobic woman who equated anything green with cruel punishment astonish herself by craving salad after just three days of giving herself permission to eat whatever she wanted. So if you're tempted to binge, create a healing ritual around eating one of your favorite foods. And in this ritual, you'll set the table, light candles, perhaps put on beautiful music, and eat consciously, savoring every bite. 
And imagine the food having marvelous healing powers that are making you healthier and more beautiful. And just continue eating this way until you feel the first sensation of fullness. Again, you'll probably find yourself eating less and enjoying it more. And end by giving thanks for your healing food. If you do catch yourself eating unconsciously at some point, forgive yourself. Notice what the binge is telling you about your emotional needs. Forgive the eating and address the cause. How are you feeling? Empty, angry, sad, or scared? And what can you do about it? After all, the holidays, with all their fren frenetic activity and social obligations and childhood associations, are prime time for exacerbating emotional eating. And as you make a commitment to conscious eating, also make a commitment to self-care. Make a list of other, other things you can do to nurture and soothe yourself that don't involve food. And give yourself time to do them especially when the urge to overeat arises. Let conscious eating become just the beginning of a more conscious approach to the holiday season, where the frenzy of it all doesn't override the spirit of celebration and joy. So I'd love to hear your comments, and you can always write to me at lynn at lynnwoodland.com, and I'll do my best to respond. On my website, you can find all kinds of free downloads and recorded meditations. And there's a place where you can leave a request for free distance healing and a number of other resources. And for a deeper dive into this kind of work, check out my year-long miracles course, a, a comprehensive program of online materials, live webinars, one-to-one -one coaching, all for living a miraculous life. So until next month, namaste.